Summary of Fathers and Sons by Ivan Turgenev. In 1859, Nikolai Petrovich Kursanov, who is 44 years old, owns a small Russian farm. He stays at an inn while he waits for his son Arkady, who just graduated from Petersburg University. Arkady is with his great friend and guide, a medical student named Yevgeny Vasilyak Bazarov, when his carriage pulls up. Arkady introduces Yevgeny to Nikolai as his great friend. Nikolai is very happy to see his son, but on the way back to the family farm, Marino, he can feel that the distance between them is growing. Nikolai is very embarrassed when he tells Arkady that his lover, Fenichka, has started living in the house. Arkady reassures him, feeling proud of his own more grown-up outlook. When Fenichka doesn't show up for breakfast the next day, Arkady rushes to meet her. However, things get even more awkward when he learns that she and his father have a baby boy named Mitya. When Pavel, Nikolai's smart brother, joins the group, Arkady tells his confused father and uncle that Bazarov is a nihilist, which means that he looks at everything critically and doesn't believe in any rules. When Bazarov shows up, Pavel questions him about why he doesn't trust any authority. This makes both men feel angry. Over the next few weeks, Bazarov stays at Marino, where he works on scientific projects and makes friends with many of the servants. He doesn't like Nikolai and Pavel's simple life and old-fashioned liberalism, though. Bazarov and Arkady also often fight about philosophical ideas. Arkady is persuaded by Bazarov that Nikolai's love of poems and Pushkin should be challenged by telling him to read scientific works instead. Nikolai is hurt when Arkady does this, and he tells Pavel that he had hoped to be closer to Arkady, but that even though he tries to keep up with the times, they seem to have grown too far apart. Pavel keeps getting into fights with Bazarov because he doesn't believe in ideals and institutions. Arkady and Bazarov go to the small town to see Arkady's cousin Kalyazin, who is a politician. They also see Bazarov's loud follower Sitnikov and Madame Kukshin, an odd noblewoman who studies chemistry. Later, Arkady falls in love with Madame Anna Odintsov, a smart young widow he meets at a governor's ball held in Kalyazin's honor. Even though Bazarov says that free-thinking women are monstrosities, he is also taken with Anna and suggests that they go to Nikolskoy to see her land. When Arkady and Bazarov go to Nikolskoy, Arkady is soon sent to talk to Anna's shy sister, Katya, while Anna and Bazarov argue about art and human nature. During their time at Nikolskoy, Arkady and Bazarov move apart as Bazarov spends more time with Anna. Arkady thinks he misses Anna even though he enjoys spending time in nature with Katya. Bazarov's growing feelings for Anna are driving him crazy. He doesn't believe in love and fights Anna's attempts to get to know him better. One day, he grabs her with all his strength, but she pulls away. When he says sorry, Anna says they just didn't understand each other. But when Sitnikov shows up uninvited and makes things awkward, Arkady and Amudi Bazarov leave the farm to go see Bazarov's parents. Vasily and Irina, Bazarov's parents, are thrilled to see him for the first time in three years. Vasily is a retired army doctor, and Irina is his wife. They are both very happy to see him, and they welcome him and his wife with warm country hospitality. Vasily doesn't care that Bazarov says his medical knowledge is out of date. He tells Arkady that he worships his only son. But Bazarov is sad about Anna and tired of living in the country, so he and Anna leave again in three days, leaving his parents shocked and sad. Back in Marino, Bazarov gets back to doing scientific studies, while Arkady gets tired of Bazarov and can't wait to get back to Nikolskoy. After ten days, he rushes to Nikolskoy under the guise of showing Anna some old letters that her mother had sent to Arkady's mother. When he gets to the house, he is surprised by how happy he is to see Katya for the first time. In Arkady's absence, Bazarov and Fenichka become friends. Fenichka likes how down-to-earth Bazarov is and listens to his advice about how to care for Mitya. One day, he surprises Fenichka in the yard by giving her a passionate kiss. When she tries to pull away, he doesn't let her. Pavel comes out of the trees. He has seen everything. Later that day, Pavel dares Bazarov to a fight, and Bazarov agrees. 
He realizes that Pavel isn't fighting him on behalf of Nikolai, but because Pavel is in love with Fenichka. The next morning, at dawn, they meet in a far-off wood. Even though they both think what they're about to do is crazy, Pavel won't stop. Soon, they are moving toward each other with their pistols. Pavel shoots but misses, and Bazarov shoots without aiming and hits Pavel in the leg. Bazarov goes into doctor mode right away and decides that Pavel's wound isn't too bad, but he has to stay in bed for a week. The next morning, when Bazarov leaves Mariino, he says to himself, these damned little gentry. Pavel asks Fenichka behind closed doors to always love Nikolai, and he later gets Nikolai to promise to marry Fenichka no matter what other people think. At Nikolskoy, Arkady's and Kadia's friendship strengthens. Bazarov stops by to tell Arkady what happened between him and Pavel on his way to his parents' house. He also says that he and Arkady seem to be tired of each other and that they should probably part ways. He later talks to Anna, and they both agree that they don't have any bad feelings toward each other and that love is just an imaginary feeling the next day, Arkady stutteredly asked Kadia to marry him, and she said yes. Arkady and Bazarov said goodbye to each other. Bazarov said that Arkady is not meant to live a lonely, nihilistic life because he is a good little liberal gentleman. Arkady is sad, but his love for Kadia quickly takes over. Bazarov isn't himself when he's at his parents' house. He seems antsy and sad, and he even looks for his father to talk to. Eventually, he starts helping his father take care of the sick peasants. One day, he does an exam on a person who died from typhus and cuts himself. In just a few days, Bazarov gets very sick with typhus. He sends for Anna. She comes with her own doctor, who says that Bazarov has no chance of getting better. Bazarov tells Anna how beautiful she is in his last moments of clarity. The next day, he dies. Six months later, Nikolai throws a goodbye dinner for Pavel, who is going to Moscow for work. Nikolai and Fenichka and Arkady and Katya both got married last week. Everyone is a little uncomfortable and sad, but they are mostly happy. Arkady and Katya have a son named Nikolai after some time has passed. Arkady becomes interested in farming and making Mary Eno better, and Nikolai travels around to help the peasants by supporting land reform. Pavel goes to Dresden, where he lives a kind but sad life in Russian and English high society. And in a rural cemetery, Vasily and Irina are often seen crying over Bazarov's grave and taking care of it with flowers that say, life that never ends. About the author. Turgenev was born to a poor cavalry officer and the heiress of a huge estate with 5,000 serfs. He was born into the Russian noble class. Even though he grew up with a lot of money, his mother was strict and sometimes mean. Even so, he grew to love nature and the stories and ways of life of the peasants. Having grown up with foreign governesses, Turgenev was an avid westernizer who studied in Berlin after his time at Petersburg University, he became a particularly enthusiastic student of German idealist philosopher G.W.F. Hegel. Turgenev thought that Russia would be best off if it adopted the ideas of the European Enlightenment, and he was very against the serf system. He never got married, but he had an affair with a French opera singer named Pauline Bayardot for his whole life, and he had an illegitimate daughter with one of his family's serfs. Some reviewers have called him the un-Russian Russian. He was the first Russian author to be widely read in Europe. Fathers and Sons was his best. Some people were shocked that the book talked about nihilism at all, while others thought that the figure of Bazarov, the nihilist, was a slanderous caricature. Turgenev wasn't ready for the wave of criticism, so he thought about giving up writing altogether. However, he wrote several novels, short stories, and plays, including Virgin Soil, Sportsman Sketches, and A Month in the Country. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.